Have you ever wanted to make a sick eye zoom transition but not know how to? Well, look no further because in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an advanced eye zoom transition in DaVinci Resolve. All that stuff coming up. But first, my name is Billy Repka, and if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be up to date on the newest DaVinci Resolve tutorials put out. So if you guys want to follow along, click the link in the description to download all of these files for free. So let's just get into it. All right, so now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, we have our clips out, we got our timeline, everything looks nice and pretty and stuff. The only thing we have to do before we jump into Fusion is to grab this clip right here and drag it on top above the eye and shorten it to where it matches the length of the eye. Then we're gonna highlight everything and create a new Fusion clip and then just jump into Fusion. So now we have our media in one and our media in two. Our media in one is our eye. So I'm gonna hit F2 and rename it to I. And then our media two is the forest. Now we're gonna disconnect the forest from the rest of the node tree. So our next step is to track our eye and then connect that tracking data to the masks. Add in our tracker. We're not gonna add in the planar tracker. A lot of people love the planar tracker, but the planar tracker doesn't really work with the method that I'm going to use. So we need to use the normal tracker here. So now under the tracker node, you're gonna to go to the operations tab and under operation, you're gonna to go to match move and then just pretty much leave everything the same. Go back to trackers. So we're gonna grab this little tab here and we're gonna move it over the center of the eye. So we have two boxes right here. This box is the search area. This is the area that if your tracker gets off of what it was tracking, it's going to look inside this box to try to find that object you were originally tracking. And this itself, this is the tracker. So I wanna track the eye itself. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger than the eye. And then I'm gonna position it in center and see it'll zoom in. And also it'll show you what you're tracking and the position of it right here. So you see right down here that it's actually almost center. We just have to go down a little and it should be perfect. And now just track forward. So as this thing's tracking, it's going to show you if there's any movement down here. This is real time tracking right here. So you're not seeing any movement here. So that means we're getting a good track. If the center was everywhere all over the eye, then we would be getting a really bad track and we would have to be doing it again. So now we're gonna grab our lips mask right here and we're gonna connect it to our merge node, grab a background node, and we're going to connect it to the merge node and now you see that our mask is showing up like this. We don't want that to be happening. So once again, click on your merge node and hit control T and it's gonna invert everything right here. And then you're going to go to your background and drag the alpha all the way down. Then under your lips mask, invert it. So now we have this right here and then just resize it by using these little areas around the corner and put it in the center. Once you have it positioned over the pupil, you're going to grab the soft edge and you are just going to feather the heck out of it. Move the border width up just a little. So you can see it's too soft and it's actually taking away our eyelid. So to fix that, we're gonna click on our ellipse mask and we're gonna add in our polygon mask. So now we're gonna trace our eyelid out with this polygon mask and it doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to feather the heck out of it. So bring it up just like this and connect it over there. We're just going to soften the edge just a little so the transition's not as drastic and then add a little border in there. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So we're just gonna drag our masks up and we're actually gonna add a transform node right here. And the reason for the transform node is that we can't actually stick our tracking data to these masks right here. We need to stick it to the transform node. So under the transform node, we're gonna right click on center and go to connect to and you got tracker one. And then under tracker one, we're gonna go unsteady position. And now when I play it, you can see that our masks are actually moving but it looks like we have to reposition our mask just a little. Somehow it got off. So I'm just gonna copy everything and I'm going to just move it around to where it's, it's about good right there, I would say. So the next step we have here is to duplicate this eye. So on the eye node, we're gonna hit Control C and then go over here and paste it with Control V. And now we're gonna add it in with a merge node. So just drag the merge node in, connect our eye to the merge node, and now under this merge node, we can just control the blend. So in the beginning, if we want just a little reflection, we can have it, but then if we zoom all the way in, it's fully transparent. So for right now, under the blend, we're just gonna bring it all the way down to zero. We wanna be able to see right through it. Then we're just gonna add two transform nodes here and position the pivot for both of these nodes in the center. 
And if you keep having this thing where like it slips and it goes way too far, just like this, hold control. It'll make it so much easier and it won't move as rapidly and crazy. I don't know why that happens in DaVinci Resolve. It's super annoying, but just hold control and it'll make micro adjustments. So now we wanna add in our forest. So just add in a merge node right here, connect our forest, make sure that our forest is in the background and our eye is in the foreground. So under this merge, just control T and it'll shift it to the background. I like to add in a transform node right here, just in case I want to scale things in, move it around, do all that stuff. So now we're gonna make the zoom animation. So in transform two under size, just grab this size and just drag it up. The reason why we're doing that is because we can't actually zoom in as far as we want, but if you combine two transform nodes and have one zoomed in all the way, and then the next one can zoom in farther. So now you can see that I can zoom in as far as I really want to. So under transform three, grab our size and actually scale it back down to where it fills the frame. So this transform is actually gonna be our size. So I'm gonna name it size. So now under frame zero, I'm gonna add a keyframe and then I'm gonna move forward about 20, 25 frames and just zoom in a little. So I want that like slight zoom in the beginning. And now we're gonna do our main zoom. So go forward to like frame 80 and we're just gonna punch right through the center of it like this. All right, so now we have our zoom, but we just need to fix it because really it looks slow and it looks ugly and I don't like that. So we're gonna open the spline tab and just expand a little. And under our size, I'm just going to highlight everything and hit S. S just means smooth. And now under this first keyframe here, this is where we're pushing into the eye. I want it to be very smooth, so I'm gonna grab this handle and hold control and bring it in just like this. And then under the top, I'm going to do the same and bring it in and have it be a really nice S just like this. So that looks pretty good to me. So now we wanna go back to this merge right here and mess with the blend. So in the beginning, because we're zooming into the eye, I want the blend to be like almost maxed out. So I want it to be kind of like this to where we're just seeing the reflection of it. So under frame zero, we're just gonna grab the blend and we're gonna make it pretty strong to where it's like there's a reflection in his eye. And then add a keyframe. So on frame 30, I'm gonna bring the blend down just a little. And then I'm gonna jump forward to about frame 50 and I'm gonna bring it down all the way. So now the last thing to do is to add motion blur. So under our merge three, we're just gonna add one more transform node right here and then go to our settings and under motion blur, we're just gonna bring the quality up and then the shutter angle a little more. So now we're gonna have some quality motion blur that's gonna hide any imperfection that we don't want the viewer to see. So there you have it, the advanced eye zoom transition in DaVinci Resolve. So if you thought this video was helpful, give it a like. If you like me, hit the subscribe button. And if you really like me, hit that bell notification. So since it's Christmas time and you know you got gifts and all that good stuff, what is one piece of gear that you would like? Let me know in the comments below. For me, it's a new camera. At the moment, I shoot on a GH5, but I'm actually gonna have to switch back to an M50 because the GH5 is not mine. So I'd like a new camera, something that is either the GH5 or of like the quality of the GH5, possibly when Sony comes out with it, the A7S III. So anyway, as usual, the video on the top is a video all about the stutter shift effect in DaVinci Resolve. It adds energy into your videos. It's super cool, super sick. Check that out. And the video on the bottom is a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.